Hello, all you alien conspiracy theorists out there. It's your host with the most, Benjamin Dutill, with the Horror Heathen YouTube channel and the South Jersey Horror Podcast. Today on this intense episode, I am talking to Ashton Selecki, who plays Firefly in the new upcoming sci-fi thriller, Roswell Delirium, directed by Richard Bakewell. Um, a few months ago, I had the opportunity to speak to Richard about this movie. Great guy. Love talking to him. I gained a lot of insight about this film. And I am super excited about watching this when it's released in theaters, which I think is May. I don't know. They keep changing the dates on me. It's really annoying. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, without further ado, please give a warm welcome to the beautiful, the talented Ashton. How are you doing? Ah, hi. Thanks. I'm good. Thanks for having me. So quick synopsis about this film for those who have not watched my last interview with Richard Bakewell because you all suck. Um, it's a quick synopsis. Sorry, I didn't mean to say that. I'm so sorry. Karma's you said it. It's too late. You can't edit it out. It's, it's done. <laughs> Karma's gonna come. Karma's gonna come back and bite me in the ass. I can see it now. Okay, so during the 1980s, the U.S. was hit by a wave of nuclear attacks, so-called nuclear attacks. Anyway, and after the fallout, those who remained pretend like everything is normal, like me. I just go mind my own business, whatever. And even though they all experience radiation poisoning, bleh, anyway, a young girl named Mayday tries to make contact on a series of ham radios with her father, who is in space on a shuttle mission. Instead of making contact, she receives an intergalactic, intergalactic, wow, listen to me, I can't even talk right now, intergalactic distress call from space that leads her on a journey to Space Rock, the land where Area 51 once was. So if you've seen Independence Day, if you've seen Roswell, all the other damn shows and movies. What the F is going on? Because everybody keeps changing the stories about this place. You know, they're aliens or they're not aliens. What are you making with your damn minds? Anyway, <laughs> enough about my, my rant. I'll get off my soapbox now. And like I said, I'm here talking to Ashton Slecky, who plays Firefly. Yes, please. Um, tell the world who you are and where you come from. Oh, hello. I'm... <sighs> Yep, I'm Ashton Selecki. Oh, man, I hate the question of like, who are you? Where do you come from? Da, da, da. It's like, you know, suddenly you forget like who you are and where you came from and all your memories. And then you're just like a spirit stuck in a body. But anyway, I grew up in a tiny town in the middle of nowhere in Montana. Um, I lived all over the world, grew up with my grandparents, um, came to a LA just a couple years ago because I, along with everyone and their mother in LA, had this dream of being an actor. And uh, I've been here for a couple years, booked Roswell, and things have just been rolling forward. I don't know, what do you want to know? I have a dog. She's my whole world. <laughs> like, that's basically all you need to know is that I have a dog and I'm in love with her. So <laughs> simple and happy. I love it. It's. Ugh. I wish my life was was that easy, but you know, complications, complications. Being an adult, yada yada yada, it's pain in the ass. So, so Montana. I drove through Montana on a Greyhound bus, and mm -hmm. goddamn, it was the longest trip of my entire life. Just <laughs> people, people <laughs> underestimate it because they're like, oh, Montana's just like little Montana. No, I think I think it's the fourth largest state by geography. So, like to go from east to west, I think takes you like 12 hours or something like it's really yes, yeah and that's, that's you exactly gone through, like you would have gone through a smidgen of really beautiful territory and mountains and all that but you would have gone through like a very long period of time where it's just like flat and the road is straight for like 70 miles and you don't turn at all yeah that must have been a long one long yes because i was traveling from washington state all the way north along the canadian border and it went back down on the east coast it was the longest five days of my life so um yeah. Um, Trenton to Montana, it was, it, you're right, it took about 12 hours to get across that long ass state. Um, yeah. But we stopped in Butte. So um, oh I, yes. I don't remember anything because I got drunk that night. So I don't remember anything. From <laughs> yeah, Montana, that's so. very on par for Butte. That is so on par. Also, we don't really, we don't call it Butte, Montana, for the record. It's actually Butte, America. <laughs> okay. And it's it's like they're okay. Irish, like, uh they they have this festival every year it's like a softball tournament 
and it's called mullet fest. And I, I'm like, not joking you people shave their head into mullets. They prepare all year round. And then it's like this tournament of softball and then all this other stuff. And then people just go out and get absolutely plastered and it's an absolute blast. So all I picture are mullets, Camaros, cigarettes, Coors Light and Ram Jam. That's all I can see right now. Yeah, that and then throw some like bar fights in there, uh, quite a lot of bar fights and throw some like Irish music in there and then you've got it. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. It's like the band Ram Jam with um, Black Betty. I, that's, all I, that's all I can think of right now. Is the... <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so just by watching the trailer of this, um, I'm very excited to see this movie. I really am because mm-hmm. I've watched it like eight or nine times already. Just I'm, I'm, a, I'm more of a details guy. I'm looking at the details. I'm watching the movie. Like, okay, there's that. There's that. And the Michael Hall. Oh, D. Wallace. This, 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 and this. I'm just like a little schoolboy. So <laughs> it's great. It's fantastic. And Russell Johnson, dude. About John. I can't wait to see him. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty awesome. I, it's it's insane too because like these people are such legends, and I. I operate with my head underneath a rock like most of my life. I'm just like happily naive in certain ways. And one of those ways is names and people, which I am in the worst industry ever for that to happen, like honestly. So when I was, I I went to set for Roswell Delirium before I filmed my stuff because I played a little girl grown up and I wanted to watch her and like see, you know, like maybe she plays with her hair or something, you know, just keep it consistent as she grows up. And um, Anthony Michael Hall was there. And he's such a gracious guy, but like, I, I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. Okay. And I was nervous and I was watching. I was like, Ooh, I'm so nervous. And he walks up to me. He's like, Hey, don't worry. You're going to be, you're going to be fine. Everything's going to go great. And I looked at this man straight in the face. I was like, yeah, don't worry, man. You're going to do great too. And then he was I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> if he's not Anthony Michael Hall. And he was so gracious about it. He was so nice. He just smiled and chuckled. Like he knew, he knew. And then he walked away. And then afterwards, Rick, the director came up to me and he was like, so you know who that is, right? And I was like, oh yeah, you know, I, I met him. He's like, that's Anthony Michael Hall. I was like, that's Anthony Michael Hall. Oh my God, I'm such an asshat. <laughs> <laughs> See, me and my story about Mike and Tony Moran, I know exactly how you feel. So. Yes, exactly. I was like, I know that feeling. <laughs> so, For shame, you didn't know who he was. For shame. I know. Stoner, shame, ring the bell, shame, shame. <laughs> so, so following this on Instagram and social media, I see you're out there attending the premieres of this movie. Um, yeah. And was it Phoenix was the last one, most recent one? I yeah, think? yeah, like just uh, about a week ago, not even a week ago. Yeah. So what was that like, attending the premiere of this movie? Okay. Okay, so we had the first showing of it in December, I think. And... Uh, Two, okay, this when I went to Phoenix, it was the third time I saw him. The first time I saw it was December here in LA. Um, they oversold the theater, which was like a great problem to have, but also really awful. But um, I don't remember the first time I watched it. I think I blacked out. I was so nervous. I was so scared. I'd never seen myself like on a giant screen before. And there's like hundreds of people there that I don't know. And I'm like, oh my God, am I like, you know, just like having existential crisis entirely. So I don't remember the first time that I have it, except for that my hands were sweating profusely. And I don't think I breathed at all for like the two hours of the movie. But when I saw it in Arizona, that was the third time I saw it. I was at the Phoenix Film Festival, which, by the way, is like an incredible film festival. It's one of my best experiences at a film festival. So it's just like really great vibe. Everybody's down to earth, really well organized. Just like there's a margarita bar outside also. So like, you know, pretty top notch. But anyway, um, and so that was the third time slash second time that I remember seeing it. And it was it's so cool Because Roswell Delirium is one of those ones where, truthfully, when you're watching it the first time, there's so much being thrown at you, but like you're being breadcrumbed this way and this way and this way. And it's only until the very end where you're like, oh, oh, what? And it's one of those movies where you're like, okay, now I have to watch this again. So when you watch it again, having known all these little details, all these little things, you're like, oh, that's it. That's it. And so it's so satisfying to see. And and also I wasn't as nervous anymore. because I was like, okay, I know what I'm getting myself into. And also I sat next to Rick the whole time, you know, bless his soul. 
he cries every time. And I think that's the most beautiful thing. He's just, it's just like emotional and amazing. And it's so cool because that was his baby that he brought to life and he gets to watch it. And the performances across the board from like the, so much of the cast is so talented that it's just like, it just rips your heart open. Or it should. And if if it doesn't, you might be a psychopath. <laughs> and then I'd recommend you to go to therapy. But... <laughs> see, I, I don't think I'll be able to watch myself on the big screen because I'll, I'll imagine me sitting in the theater. I see my big, giant, fat head on the screen. Yeah. And I'm looking like, is that a booger hanging on my mouth? No. Is that a cliffhanger? Is it booger? Did I put yeah, you on the scene? Did I wash yeah. my ass? Then I mean, what happened? <laughs> it's like, yeah, exactly. No, that's a lot of what it is. I'd seen myself on smaller screens from like some short films I'd done before. And it was exactly like what you said. I was like, oh my God, why am I doing this? This is absolutely horrific. That's what I look like. That's what I look like. My God, I need to go sit with myself. And then after a while, you kind of get used to it that like you don't, you really don't look the same in person as you do on screen. And that's for better or for worse for some people. I was going to, I will let you decide when you see, but <laughs> anyway, but then you get to this point where like you're watching the screen and it's so clearly not you that it's like you're watching somebody else. Uh, but that, that being said, um, I can definitely see why there are actors that never watch their work. And I may be one of those soon. I it's you you know I maybe it'll be a one and done. I'll watch it and be like, all right, I'll learn and take that learning to the next time. But after that, it's just like exactly. I'm like, is that a booger in my nose? Why didn't anybody tell me there's like spinach in my teeth? Doesn't that go against the movie? <laughs> <laughs> so the vibe I'm getting from this movie, and I have to watch the trailer like nine million times. Yeah. Um, it carries a Stranger Things '80s esque aesthetic nostalgia is what it feels like to me um uh, but a very sensitive very human story about surviving trauma yeah. and the will to continue to keep going on i mean all these catastrophes going on and people are like fuck it let's just keep going i mean oh yeah where's yeah. this gonna take us let's push it let's push it another step where are we gonna go with this what is what's gonna happen next and it's like just yeah. throw it to the wind like you know what let's just see what happens fuck it yeah, you know, what's really interesting about this film that actually, I mean, when I read it, it, it I was bawling when I read it. Um, and then when I watched it, for the first like two thirds of the film, you, it surprises you, it sucker punches you. Like, I'm laughing, it's funny, it's lighthearted, and then there'll be a sprinkle of something, and you're like, oh, what's that? Oh, back to funny, da, da, da. But it comes to a point in the movie where it actually is such a psychological thriller where you don't know what's real and what's not. And that's so purposeful because when a person, ex like especially a kid, experiences extreme trauma and you will find out what that is when you watch it um it it really messes with the psyche of a person and so when you're watching the movie you realize that all of a sudden you've been watching it from the perspective of this twisted psyche and at the end it start fall it starts falling apart and you're like oh my god wait 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 is that wait what 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 what? And the next thing you know, you're bawling because you realize that the heart of the story is exactly what you said. It's like this trauma, but more than that, it's this mother-daughter relationship and what happened between them. And it comes left field and it's... I should stop talking about that now. I should stop talking. But it's, it's a sucker. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I just have to find out when the movie is released in May. Is May 4th the actual date I mean, okay, I don't know. Listen, I wish that I knew. So all I do know is um, I think Rick was intending for a May 4th uh, release date because he's a, a giant Star Wars fan. So obviously May the 4th. That makes him. sense. I mean, sci-fi. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, Yeah. right, right. But um, we've <clears> been like very humbly surprised and, and taken by the response that's been receiving in the film festival uh, circuit. And so... I think he we're gonna ride out the film festival circuit until it's done before it's released on like a streaming streaming platform. But I don't know. Don't shoot the messenger because I don't know. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I, I might have to ask Rick later on. I'm, I keep nagging and nagging and nagging until I get an answer. I don't know. You need both. Might... Like more power to us. 
and then he'll, he'll he'll want he'll eventually block me on Facebook. You know, it's like shut up, dude. Stop asking me. So, <laughs> so have you read up about anything that had to do with Roswell and the conspiracy theories? That's a random question I have to ask. Wait, wait, what? Say that again. Uh, random question. Um, yeah. Have you read up on anything that had to do with the Roswell conspiracy at all? No. Wait, with the aliens. Yeah, like An area anything. Yeah, something, anything. Oh, um, you mean my entire life being obsessed with Area Fifty One? My my papa and I are very <laughs> into aliens. And, uh, yes, I have, and I I I would say that Roswell Delirium definitely plays into it because it takes place in Roswell, Nevada, next to Area Fifty One. Um, yeah, and the movie definitely plays to those things for sure. So, do you believe? Do I believe in aliens? Absolutely. Absolutely, I do. Because truthfully, this universe is so massive. I think it would be really egocentric to believe that we are the only things that are intelligent and that exist in the entire universe that is so big that we cannot even fathom its size. So A, absolutely, yes. And B, I, okay, fun fact. I, you know, I grew up in this tiny town in the middle of nowhere in Montana. I hope that the FBI is not going to like arrest me for this. But one day, one day I was like sitting outside of this tennis court and I, I like look up and I'm with somebody. I'm with like a high school friend of mine and we look up and there's like these two giant lights that are not shining out at us, but they're just hovering maybe like eight feet up and it's quiet. And these lights are like massive and it just like raises up and we're like, what is that? There's no sound. Like if that was like a helicopter or something, like we would have heard something no sound. And then all of a sudden it's like up here and it just like, like it just, and we're like, what is that? And it just goes. And then it goes down. Maybe like, looks like maybe a mile away. We're like, well, that was weird. Think nothing of it. We're like, we're insane, whatever. Turns out the next day that like half a dozen other kids in our class saw it from a different side of town. And also farmers were like reporting it to like the government and like the police and everything that their cattle were freaked out by this thing. And it was never addressed. It was never addressed. And in my mind, I'm like, you know what? It's because it was a UFO. It's absolutely what it was. It's, it's funny you say that because about a month ago, my friend Mike, who lives in Pennsylvania, um, took pictures of this like the silver triangle thing flying in the sky. And he was like, he took a really good picture, like really up close good picture of it. And there was the one was there. They took another picture, but two other ones showed up behind it. Like, no, like, no, uh, -uh. <laughs> that is not no. And then he said, next thing you know, they were gone. And I'm like, dude, you realize you probably most likely 95% chance you got a UFO on your camera. So I would keep that picture. And CIA, <laughs> NSA, FBI, whoever the fuck you are, if you're but watching wait. this, I'm screwed. So. <laughs> <laughs> but what was it like? Like not that long ago, maybe a year ago, maybe a little longer. Like the government, uh, the U.S. government casually like released that there's like confirmed sightings of UFOs, and it was like in the midst of all this other like political turmoil at the time. So it just kind of like went under the radar. Oh God, we're getting into conspiracy theories, but it happened. <laughs> Well, it's okay because it goes along with the movie. It's okay. I, I, I totally get it. So. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> we're talking the premise. If you're listening to this, we're talking the premise of the movie, okay? Leave us okay. alone. Do not arrest us. We mean well. It's just the movie. <laughs> I'm screwed. <laughs> we're living, I'm in danger. Oh, shit. Okay. So, so... This movie is, is, is got me baffled a little bit, but um, even though I keep watching the damn trailer over and over again, and the director was not be able to give me too much insight about the movie. So, right. what kind of details can you give us about the movie that are like on your I can say list and cannot say list? Okay, let me go over the cannot say list. Okay, um, what I can say is this is like um an alternate history movie where if during the cold war russia bombed the us um so that's the world 
Uh, and it's about this little girl. It's from her experience in, in the movie. And so basically after the U.S. was bombed, and one of the places that was bombed was Area 51 among some other cities, um, and Area 51 became known as Space Rock. And Space Rock, like people, you know, Area 51 and aliens and all the current conspiracies that we have, like, you know, existed. Then. And so they believed, a lot of people believe that when the nuclear bomb hit uh, Area 51, that Space Rock became this, like, hub for possible alien activity. And so, you know, as, as we know, when there's nuclear bombs dropped, there's, like, horrific radiation poisoning that can extend for generations. And so the people of Roswell are no different. So there's a lot of effects of radiation poisoning happening that you'll see. Like, I have, like, scars on my face and stuff like that that are from that. But people are getting sick from this radiation poisoning and especially kids. And there's this hope that, well, if we just take them to space rock, maybe, maybe they'll be healed. Maybe and some people are crazy and they're like, oh, the aliens will take them and da, da, da. And so there winds up being this like this weird, mysterious hub around like, what is space rock? Like, what is this? And then that is actually what the movie winds up dissecting in like a roundabout psychological thriller way. Um, uh, and the core of it, just to like skip all the black box mystery in the middle, the core of it is about this like mother daughter relationship and their relationship with space rock and what that means for them, both in the past when she was a little girl and as an adult, and you find out the reality of it, the reality of aliens, the reality of that. And it's, uh, I'm not going to say it's pretty, <laughs> but it's, so uh, it's, 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 more, it's, it's more along lines like aliens, 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 space, rock, space, rock, mother daughter relationship. Now I'm going to get into that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, cause you see from the beginning, you know, this mother daughter, they're very close. They're very close. Like um, her dad, uh, Mayday or Firefly, I play the older Firefly. Um, the dad is, is an astronaut and, um, so like they're heavily involved with space anyway, and Mayday is making contact like on these ham radios and is detecting all these things that's happening. And um, so like the theme of aliens is all throughout and it's it's never debunked. I'll say that it's never debunked, but there are other things um, like pretty horrific things that run in tandem with it that you wind up at the end being like, wow. I, I don't know for sure what is real. Like I've heard several different people be like, oh, this is what happened. And somebody will be like, no, that's not what happened. It's this. And somebody else will be like, da, 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 da. so it's one of those movies where you're not like, oh, I got it. Like tie a bow at the end. It leaves you wondering, which some people hate. You know what I mean? Some people are like, I need to know. And other people are like, no, I like it. It could be this, could be this, could be this. So it takes you for a wild ride. That's for sure. Well, shit. I'm looking for, I love psychological thrillers. It so always keeps me guessing. I hate the attempt to wrap things around my head is what keeps me up at night. So, I mean. <laughs> yes, yes. I wanna, um, but I want to back up a little bit. Let's back up a little bit. Let's do a little rewind. So okay. your character, Firefly, what yeah. connection does she have with Mayday? What is her deal? So Mayday Malone is the little blonde girl in the movie whose perspective it takes from. But her mom calls her Firefly. Oh, good night, my little Firefly in the sky. And that comes from like uh, her dad was an astronaut. And when he went up to space, he said he could look out and see all these little lights and they looked like little fireflies. And she was pregnant at the time. So they called her Firefly. And so Mayday, when she grows up, um, I think from a place of trauma, no longer goes by Mayday. She's like, nope, I'm not Mayday. I'm Firefly. Um, and so that's the connection. And so Mayday is like 11 years old-ish, um, I think when it takes place, when it starts when she's 11, and then it jumps like 15, 20 years in the future. And then I play her at that time. That's having okay. to deal with the fallout from these traumatic. Okay, so you're, you're the grown up, you're the grown up made it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. 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 This is crazy because so whenever I go to like a film festival or something and everybody's like, so what was your experience? And it goes to like all the kids first and all their scenes are awesome. Like hilarious. So fun. So funny. All these eighties references like da, da, da. 
And all the kids are like, oh my gosh, it was so much fun. Da, 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 da. And then it gets to me and all my scenes as like the adult Mayday Firefly are like heavy. They're like so heavy. And so it gets to me and I'm like, um, I did not have like a happy time. <laughs> it's like super dark, but it was still a good time in like a sadistic way. Well, like I said, I'm looking forward to seeing this movie. I really am. Yeah, yeah. The trailer, every time I watch the trailer, the more and more anxious I get, like, God damn it, just release the movie already, okay? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Because I i don't know. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge buff of sci-fi and aliens. Even though I'm I lean towards more of the horror stuff, but there's a little there's a little trickle of alien sci-fi going down on the side somewhere. I have to, yep. like, yeah, yep. let's veer off the horror for a little bit and go to psychological thriller and then all the aliens and, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and like I said, I, I, I can't wait to see this movie to come out. Um, So, what do these people? What does the audience have look? Have, what do they have to look forward to? Is it? Do you think it's going to be great when the release is going to happen? Do you think the press is going to be full of more conspiracy theories because you know they're idiots? Um, <laughs> oh, um, I think that the general consensus that will come when when people can watch this movie is going to be first off. There's, it, I will say, bring some tissues. Like, because it takes you on a road. So it's going to be funny and then it's going to break your heart. So there's that. Um, I really think this movie is going to leave people wondering, A, okay, what actually happened? And then taking it apart and being like, wait, what was real and what was not? And then B, um, bringing in this human psychological component of like, oh my God, like how do conspiracy theories meet mental illness meet trauma and these three circles like combine into this like unique little orb and I think from that people are going to spin out they might I think most will love it I think some people who want a definitive answer are going to hate it because you don't get that ever um and I think it'll definitely fuel some conspiracy theories for sure for sure great that's all we need more conspiracy theories than news all right I know we just gotta damn. add some thought. That's true. Uh, I, I don't, believe it or not, I don't watch the news for anything but the weather. <laughs> no, I don't blame you. Oh, my God. I don't care what's going weather. on in the rest of the world. Yeah. Politics, current events. I don't give a shit. But show is it going to rain today? <laughs> show me the weather in the traffic report. That's all I care about because I have to drive into oh. Philadelphia every day to go to work, and it sucks. So – if, if there's a traffic jam, I got to figure out way another, another way to get to work. Like you people are assholes. Just drive your cars already, <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, anyway, um, are there any other projects or movies that you could talk about that are coming up in your future? Yes, I um right after Roswell, I booked my first network show, and it is a western. It just the first episode just came out last week. Comes out weekly. There's 10 episodes, so it'll finish in June. It's weekly Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on INSP. It's called Elkhorn. Um, I play... <laughs> I, it's like 1800s Western. I play the lead villain, Medora, which is, like, wickedly fun. I basically get to, like, ride horses, shoot guns, and, like you know, pulse, I'm like a puppeteer, uh, which is so fun. It's so fun. And uh, yeah, it started coming out last week, comes out weekly Thursdays, 9 p.m. Um, you can go to insp.com and there's like this button that says like, find me because it's on cable. And it, it'll give you like, you enter in your zip code and it'll be like, here's all the ways you can watch. I've been watching on Friendly TV, which is, I like them a lot. I like friendly TV. Anyway, yeah. And it's uh last night, the second episode just came out, and that's the first episode that I appear in, and I appear in all the other ones. And uh, I was screaming at my television. I don't think it gets easier to watch yourself as it goes on. I'm not sure, but I was like, I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> but it's it's oh. cool. It's awesome. Oh, look at you. Cowboys, Indians, horses, and chaps. I love it. Okay. I know, I know. I just need like a Lord of the Rings esque project, and my life will be complete because I grew up watching westerns. I'm a giant sci fi nerd, and now I just need like an epic. Like I just need to play like an elf <laughs> or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, I'm sure they're gonna make another spin off of Lord of the Rings or some shit eventually. You know, and Robert <laughs> Jackson's gonna get really bored. Okay, he's gonna sit in his office. Like, I need to make another movie. 
I'm going to call Ashton Selecki just because she said so. I'm going to start her like an elf or something. Not a goblin, an elf, okay? Not a, I, no, too- I would do it. You know what? Make me Smeagol. Make me Gollum. <laughs> like, <laughs> feminine version of that, and I'll be on another level. Another level. Well, you're too pretty to be a goblin. That's not fair. So... <laughs> 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 okay that's all the time we got today thanks so much for joining me today i really do appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule i mean you look like you're doing very well for yourself and i'm i'm looking forward to seeing roswell delirium i really am and seeing everybody so the people i grew up with are in that movie for fuck's sake i mean I guess... <laughs> but who we got um anthony michael hall lisa welchel d wallace reggie Vell johnson and sam jones they're like yeah. my parents for fun. Just like, also, you know. like, D Wallace, like she's going to blow you away in this film. She's chef's kiss. Look up oh, to that one. Um, all of you are talented, obviously, because Richard p- picked all of you for a reason. So there's that. To pat yourself on the back. Give yourself a high five. Do what you got to do to, you know, to praise yourself, because that's what it's all about. Um, mm. Thank you again. I wish you nothing but the best in your career and prosperous movies to come along and i'm gonna be looking for you in an epic movie like lord know. of the rings or some shit yeah. i don't know that's, we'll that's speak it into existence. <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen boys and girls sci-fi fanatics alien conspiracy theorists out there the beautiful the talented ashton selecki give it a round of applause yay did so well thank you for joining me today <laughs> and i Thanks. will see you on the big screen was the last day I saw her. The day I was taken. Was that the first and only time you've been abducted? Does anyone copy my transmission? Urban legend has it that Space Rock is a place with healing powers that originated from the crashed spaceship in Roswell. So, anyone believe in aliens? (laughs) What a freak. Bizarre. If anything ever happens, I'm going to save you. Didn't that place go sour after the attack? Nobody knows if that's true or not. It's not like anybody ever found it, but we're going to try. I don't know if it's a distress call or what, but that transmission I've been repeating for the last 51 days. Do you know that you exposed a top secret military exercise? Which alerted the Soviets. So I didn't make contact with them? I'm sorry, them? Aliens? The unidentified has to be an alien spacecraft. We need to find that black box and see what really happened. They took her. Who took her? Them. What happened to Firefly? Do you know where she is? The White House has just been evacuated. No sign of how many more are headed this way. I think we've come to the end of this journey. It's time to say goodbye to Space Rock.